Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to make geometry follow a curve. So we're going to delete the default cube, then we're going to add a curve, a Bezier 1, then we're going to go into edit mode, rotate it on the z-axis by 90, and then rotate it on the y-axis by 90 again. So when we go into the side view on the x-axis, this is what it looks like. Now, using the G key we can just move the curve around. We can also rotate the points with the R key. And we can also extrude to create new points using the E key. So you just create the shape you want. And if you want to subdivide between two points, select them and subdivide. And I normally use two cuts just to add more control. Okay, I'm liking that. So you can finish that in your edit mode, finish the curve you want. And then I'm gonna, for the sake of this tutorial, bring it along the X axis, so it's off center. Then what I'm next gonna do is back in the edit mode, I'm gonna select the end point, and that can be whether, wherever you want your piece of geometry to start, normally at one end or the other. And then I'm gonna go curve, snap, cursor to selected. Then I'm going to exit edit mode and go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Then, again for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to add a cylinder. So mesh and then cylinder. This is just a default cylinder, so yeah. And then I'm going to add a modifier, a curve modifier, and I'm going to change the deform axis to the Z, and then I'm going to go and use the eyedropper and select the Bezier curve. Okay, so then when we move it along the z-axis we can see it follows the curve but there's no definition so I mean unless you're after this effect um, it's not really ideal. So one way you can do this is add subdivisions. I'm just going to du duplicate this cylinder here just really quickly just to save the original. You don't have to do this I'm just going to do it because I'm going to show two methods here and then I'm going to scale down the cylinder by 0.1 and then I'm going to go into the edit mode and do the edge loop and do 10 cuts. So now when I exit the edit mode and move it along the Z axis, you can see it's moving along the curve and it's really cool. I mean, it's perfect, it's more like a roller coaster. Whee. Whee. <laughs> um, and then to carry on that geometry, you can add an, an array modifier Pull the array modifier above the curve modifier and then scale the number so we'll just go with 24 change the factor of the x to the z make sure it's at one uh, you can see it's following the geometry and then just increase the slider until there so there you go that's one method of doing it the other method so we're going to go back to our original cylinder is so if we scale this to 0.1 on everything and then we go into the edit mode go to face selection zoom into your cylinder and then select the bottom face then mesh snap cursor to selected then temporarily disable your curve modifier and go object with the cylinder selected go object set origin origin to 3D cursor. So then turning the curve modifier back on you can see that it's pivoting it's starting from that point from the end of the cylinder so then when we go into the edit mode select the top face you can pull this out. So I'm just going to pull it along until um, we're going to scale it along the z-axis until it reaches the point we like so that's going to be here and then control A apply your scale transformations and then back in the edit mode go to edge loop and then cut let's say a hundred times actually no 200 times that should be enough and there you go so that's the other method of doing it 
I hope you found this helpful. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.